Welcome to another video about therapeutic medical physics and whether you're interested in hip prosthetics or you're studying for an oral or written exam in medical physics, I want to welcome you and begin by discussing the image that you just saw on the beginning of the video here. And in an oral exam, you may be asked, what exactly are you seeing in this image? So typically you'll see a KV image because it's very easy to tell. But uh, what we are seeing here is simply a hip prosthetic. So this, as I mentioned, is very easy to see. And it's certainly something that in a uh, oral exam or even a written exam, something they want to highlight and be sure that when you can look at a simple image, you could tell what is different about this image. And the first thing that should pop in your mind is TG63 because this is a task group that discusses hip prosthetics, how they are affected with radiation, and what steps you should take to ensure safe treatment with these type of devices in the body. So the next question certainly would be, what effect does it have with a radiation beam going through it? So how does this device affect your radiation treatment? So to begin, let's talk about our anterior portion of the surface that the beam is coming through. So there is a sharp increase in dose. So we have a dose increase of, I mean, believe it or not, the actual percentage could be up to 50%. It's not always 50%, but it could be for all energies across the board. So it is something certainly definitely to keep an aware mind about. At posterior, past the surface, we have about a 5%, I should put approximately 5% decrease for a, a 10X. And this is for the dose and simply because of the attenuation through that hip prosthetic and uh, for a beam, so again, that is 10x, and it's also any beam less than 10x, but say what happens if you have 18x or 15x? Believe it or not, and something certainly, again, when you were looking for a plan check or you're looking at a plan or planning yourself, something to note is that if you look again at 15x, 18x, we could see a dose increase of up to 50% because of pair production. So below 10X, we have some attenuation and it, you just don't get much a dose beyond that or less dose than you typically would had it not been there. But if you go greater than that, you have your pair production, the attenuation increases with this prosthetic in there, the scatter increases and the neutron production is higher for beams greater than 10X. So what, are some things that would decide how it impacts the dosimetry, the prosthetic itself. So the prosthetic may be shallow, or not shallow, it should be solid or hollow. It could be either one, that certainly affects that. The shape of the prosthetic is important. The size of it, some are obviously larger than others. And then the composition. Most are made out of titanium, but sometimes they could be made out of other things as well. And those all play a part in the dosimetry and how it impacts the uh, therapy. So what would be the best plan of action if you are see a plan or you have to plan a patient with a hip prosthetic. So again, I'm going to immediately direct anybody, especially in an oral exam, highlight TG63. Always reference any task group that may be about the question you are asked. So the first one should be, I guess, fairly obvious, is to just avoid it. Avoid it altogether. If you can change the beam arrangement, if uh, whether you use IMRT or, or four-field diamond, do something to avoid that prosthetic. That is going to be choice number one because then it doesn't affect the symmetry. Second, you want to the, simply verify the CT number with Typically, you would contact the manufacturer or you find that in some resource. And that is because you want to verify the dose calculation 
You want to verify that the CT can see it appropriately. You want to be sure that even your electron uh, density curve goes that high. So, you know, you have your CT number, and if it's so high, it, then you may not even have a, a CT number Hatsfield unit for that. And then simply in your dose algorithm, you will not have an accurate depiction of the dose distribution because it won't know what to do with it. And then third, uh, you, you could possibly use a diode. You could use a TLD if you really wanted to get uh, carried away and be sure that you know what dose you are getting in the anterior and posterior portions of the body. And you could place those in vivo on the patient's day of treatment and really know what dose you're getting just to verify and feel good about your dose calculation and what you're doing with that patient. So that is HIP Prosthetics for Medical Physics. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.